two, and one, and we are live. And greetings, everyone, uh, in the crypto Twitterverse and in crypto Twitter, and everyone who may be on YouTube watching us. My name is Tarek Lewis, and I am uh, uh, with Sommelier.Finance as well as Volume.Finance. But Sommelier.Finance is a Uniswap V3. Uh, liquidity provider uh, solution. We consider ourselves a co-processor to Ethereum, and we want to help liquidity go where it needs to be. We're so happy to have uh, our LP today. Uh, oh, sorry, not our LP. Today. <laughs> our <laughs> partner today, and a wonderful team that we uh, connected with, uh, Geralt from CyberFi. And this liquidity provider is going to be about CyberFi and DeFi automation. So if you're here for the next 25 minutes, we're going to jump in. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, you can let us know either on Twitter or in our telegrams. And we welcome Gerald from CyberFi. Greetings. Hi, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here. And uh, thank you for, uh, you know, calling me up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a pleasure. And uh, one of the reasons how we found CyberFi was that once we decided to do at Sommelier, we were looking at uh, liquidity provisioning because we're a liquidity provider solution. And we're looking at liquidity providing um, across Uniswap v3. We saw a lot of folks talking and engaging um, in asking the question, how do I automate my positions? How do I, you know, um, you know, be the lazy ape in an in a active management world? And we went out and we said, look, you know, let's look for great projects that are doing great work and talking about this area of DeFi automation. And uh, we found CyberFi, a great community, great token. Uh, I want to say congratulations on launching the community. Congratulations on having a token. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, get folks and, and get more visibility into CyberFi. Um, who is CyberFi? Um, who is Geralt? And, and if you could introduce us to uh, the, the notion and the, the idea of CyberFi and where you guys are going, we'd love to hear. So how did this get started? What's the story? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually uh, pretty pretty a long story, <laughs> but to, uh, to 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 put it surely, um, uh, I've been in crypto for quite a while and been working for a lot of DeFi stuff back in like 2018, where I, where I first got my kind of uh, you know uh, hands dirty with uh, with all the DeFi stuff. And uh, we, I had a team and we went through building about a dozen different POCs uh, in, mm -hmm. in the span of like, in the span of like eight months, uh, which okay. uh, kind of solidified, you know, my, my beliefs in De DeFi and um, got me, uh, got my brain pumping with ideas on, on DeFi stuff after right. that. And um, the market wasn't so good back then, so it was pretty yep. difficult to, um, to 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 do something. Plus, I didn't really have like a large network uh, at that point in time. And then once um, after doing some corporate stuff, I got kind of came back in 2020, um, mm -hmm. asked, asked the friend of mine to step in as a as um, a CMO that has previously done a lot of DeFi work, and um, and uh, we kind of started CyberFi, and I spent like the yeah the first kind of um, I think we started I think in like uh, somewhere around uh, like I had an idea around the beginning of twenty twenty yeah but then uh, in in the middle of uh, summer of twenty twenty we started mm -hmm. development. And then once we had a, a solid, uh, you know, working MVP, uh, we started approaching people. And um, in November, we launched uh, pretty fast. I would say it literally took probably like 10 days since we like announced till we launched, which was um, pretty crazy. I, I, I still don't know why we did that. It was, uh, um, I, I, that was the only very chaotic and or <laughs> an unorganized event that we ever yeah. had and then after that we just uh i don't know like i 
I, I, I just wanted to go down to business. And we sat down and uh, I started working hard on development and uh, we started onboarding partners for future growth. Yes. And that went pretty well. And, uh, and then in, around in December, early December, I decided that we're also going to build a launch pad. Yeah. Which wasn't originally in the white paper, but yep. I was like, this is going to be a good way to diversify us a little bit and bring more users yeah. to you know, CyberFi. Yeah. What, when you say Launchpad, is that an incubator or what should we consider that? I'd say like Samurai, right? If we look at Samurai, um, then, you know, it's, it's just like an ideal platform and a stake pad on, in one place. Yep. Uh, just Just made for, you know, good usage of um um of the ideo space that we're right now kind okay. of growing and then okay. on the on the on the lp side the story is that um i had a, i had my hand kind of around developing cross chain solutions yeah for a time and when <clears throat> and when uniswap started growing fast I kind of I, 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 I initially really thought that it's gonna be much more difficult for Uniswap to grow because they didn't mm -hmm. like fully believe in that um, they'll be able to draft so 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 much funds around uh, the LPs themselves that would provide liquidity. But that kind of changed with the emergence of staking, uh, of mm -hmm. proper LP staking, which solved that issue. And um once once kind of I saw where they're going with uh, the LP stuff and seeing how manual everything was, that led me to the idea of automating the, um, the work with LPs for users. And that's yep. how kind of our, our, our initial beta came to life. That was, that was uh, let's say, a primitive limit order um, trigger-based... Yep uh lp asset management system the mm -hmm. the biggest problem it had uh, was that we could not scale um based on the on the basic nature of the lps themselves which was mm -hmm. the situation that users we, we could only automate a transaction um uh, -huh. uh if the user if if the if we were the last transaction of the user so um let's say you put a trigger to exit an lp form and then sell your mm -hmm. uh sell your lp tokens to let's say usdt both of them like ethereum yep. and and um some staking coin whatever uh, it would only go through if we were the last transaction uh from you and um, and the, and the, and, the, and this would be perpetual. So like if, if a trigger okay. would if a trigger to sell would happen like uh, two days after the fact, um, yeah, we would also need our transaction to be the latest one on your wallet, which which led okay. to which led to why was that of, why was that necessary? That, that's interesting. Any particular reason why you had to be the last transaction was required? So the way our smart contract work is that we would have authorization on okay. the on the on the on the LPs and on okay. the activities of of the user. And okay. um, one of the one of the bigger things was that with um, let's say with tokens directly with like yeah. LP tokens, you you'd be able to just you know take them into custody, right? Or let's yeah. say yeah. Like into escrow through a smart contract. The bigger yeah. problems occurred when um, we would have to uh, withdraw your funds from a staking place. So, for example, you'd be staking on, you know, uh, on Sushi Swap, right? Yeah. Uh, for example, and yeah. and that transaction could not really be. Uh, it it could only be uh, pre uh, pre prepared in time. Let's say, right? Uh -huh. Um, you could not be like, you, you cannot take an action into escrow of, of a user. Right. So, right. 
what ended up happening is that potentially we could ask the user to like sign thousands of transactions, but that also kind of, and, and that would allow us uh, to choose uh, a higher nonce transaction if he already did a few from his wallet at the right. time of the trigger mm -hmm. happening. Um, it might be a little bit difficult to comprehend, but basically all the, uh, just, just to put it simply for our listeners, um, all of the DeFi is very manual, right? The only thing you can really do is to freeze a transaction uh, in time. And if you do that, it would carry the nonce of the transaction. And the nonce is the and the is the number uh, of like the 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 the, um, the number of activities you have done from your wallet, right? So, okay. if, if, if this okay. is the if, if this is the tenth transaction you're doing from your wallet, it has your nonce uh, be ten. A, yeah, your nonce mm -hmm. would be ten or or nine. Maybe yeah. I think the first nonce mm -hmm. is zero, yeah. but whatever. Um, zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and um, the problem was that those are pretty difficult to generate. And so th that uh, that kind of led to the situation where we understood that we cannot properly scale in the in the in the current form of the of the product. So mm -hmm. we kind of built it to a working um, a working beta and then um, and then had to pivot to a scalable product. And uh, that is V2 that we're that we're gonna give access to to our to some of our community later today actually. Um, ah, whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, there's some alpha coming. Secret alpha. <laughs> okay, alpha alert. Press the button. Woo, woo. Okay. So what's what's the alpha coming today? What are you, what are you launching? So yeah, we're uh, yeah we we announced this before. So like today's the 16th. So we're gonna give like a part of our community access to uh, the V2 of the platform. Yeah. Yep. So and 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 V two is a full fledged like asset management system. Um, okay. Where we're kind of starting off with, we're gonna start off with tokens, um, mm -hmm. then then move over to um, then move over to uh, LP tokens, then move over to yes. yield creation. Yes. And yes. stuff like that. So it's gonna be like we're obviously pretty excited with the, with the team about it. So. Let's see how it goes. There's still a lot yeah, of bugs. Yeah, of course. So, you know, it's, mm -hmm. we're still kind of uh, ma ma uh, working on it a lot, um, trying to, trying to mm -hmm. you know, do, do, do everything well. But, um, you know, yeah. it takes time, yeah. obviously, to, to, to polish stuff. Do, do, so, you, do you have anybody in particular auditing your contracts? So, uh, yes, yes. Um, mm -hmm. We have an advisory with Halborn. Uh, working on that, so okay. Uh, okay, that's that's all. That's all kind of good and well, I'd say. Yeah. Yep. So question for you. Um, one of the things is, you know, Uniswap V3 has come on board, and and uh, the approach of active management is is growing in usage and volume. Uh, what is CyberFi's position on Uniswap V3? So, CyberFi's position is that. We first need to polish our product and then go into V three. Um, okay. And, uh, it 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 took me a lot of tears <laughs> to to um, to decide on that because like I'm 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 really a proponent of like you know going fast you know doing everything you know as 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 you know really as fast as possible. So, um, but like right now we 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 understand that we need to. We need to we need to keep a straight line on um, on what we're doing and yes yeah. um, one one of the most kind of important things that we need to focus on is really the uh, the base product and um, we just don't have the capacity to be jumping from like um, uh, multiple development things we're we're already a pretty big team with like developing the launchpad developing the the v two so. It's it's pretty difficult to be jumping around. So we're, for the time being, the 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 most kind of important thing is to uh, finish V two, finish what we started. Um, yeah. And uh, with with V three, I actually I think I published um, an article 
like five months ago or something, uh, laying down some like some thoughts on uh, LP automation coming with Helium right. twelve three. Uh, yeah. But the 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 kind of the main ideas that I had and that we we might be exploring soon soon enough uh, was that um, using using automation for 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 the concentrated positions for LPs to yeah. uh to drive them around the board as uh you know as long as the as long as the uh the price changes one of one mm -hmm. of the other one of the other pretty interesting things that i kind of um discovered pretty recently is that um if if you're manually setting yourself up for an lp position um mm -hmm. On a stable coin to stable coin, mm -hmm. um, you only have zero point zero, um, like you have three decimals, uh, three decimals range, and uh, on uh, you know programmatically you can increase that to I think almost uh, 10, 10, 10 decimals I think, which mm -hmm. which I also found pretty interesting so. Basically, if you want to uh, put down an LP uh, position from 0 .0, uh, 0 0.0998 to a dollar, for example, mm. you're you're not going to be able to do that right now uh, manually uh, on, on on which Uniswap. on which AMM would you not be able to do that? Uniswap. Uniswap. Okay. Okay. Um, is that Uniswap V2 or Uniswap V3? Yeah, I haven't tested that for like you, you. You're not gonna really need that for uh, that, that. That's only that's only something you would do on V3. So, got it. Okay. So so curious. Um, you know, in terms of your current V2 product and and uh, how much use or how big the. I mean, you know, I currently look at uh, the CoinGecko price price and volume for CyberFi. You about million dollars in 24 hours. Seems that there's a lot of folks using uh, your platform. Do you have any metrics you can share with us in terms of you know what does that look like? Um, do you guys measure sort of um, engagement via TVL uh, on your contracts or some other metric? We 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 only have um, currently uh, we we only have um, um, people using uh, Samurai, right? Which is yep, both the yep, yep, pad and a launch pad. Yep, yep, yep. And um, I think if I'm not wrong, over like over at Cyberfy, we have around three thousand stakers, and then mm -hmm. um, and we raised probably like over three million dollars uh, on all of our products uh, recently. Got it. And then um, was that a uh, was that a public uh, issuance or round or? Or was it done no, on Samurai? No, no, just, 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 just aggregated through all the IDOs that we Okay, did. got it, got it, got it, got it. So about three million in total IDO volume, you would say? Uh, correct. Yes, correct. Okay, congrats. Um, and, yep. um, right now we also have the stake pad, um, which, uh, which, which generates some interesting kind of activity right now and we're starting to receive some revenue from it um pretty recently so that's nice um and um <clears throat> and uh the way kind of the, the the way it works right now is that we have uh, obviously multiple projects there and yeah. uh with um with uh with Cyberfy, we have around ten million dollars worth of TVL. Yep. And with uh, the other projects altogether, I think we have like around four or five million TVL. So that puts us at like fifty million TVL total, uh, which is obviously nice. But the the, the goal the goal is really to have the projects that we list on the stake pad overtake our TVL uh, of Cyberfy. Of yeah so yeah so that could grow uh well on its own yeah. 
Okay, okay. Well, this is okay. So this is great. Congratulations first on the upgrades. Congratulations on the efforts, on the raise, on the the idea of the platform. You're doing a lot, um, and you're executing. Why don't we go to uh, questions from the audience? If we have any, I think we have one on on, on the live stream, which is. What's your step if bear market entered tomorrow by Chaitan 8058-4939? So I'm assuming if we have a bear market, what is the CyberFi strategy? What happens next at CyberFi? I, I don't know. I had this idea two months ago. <laughs> mm. um, I was really waiting for the market to go bear like in February. Um, yeah. Like I, I've, I've been through the 2017 cycle, you know. Um, yep. So I think all of us that have went through that have PTSD around the bear market. Uh, so like, you know, anything happens, I'm already ready to, uh, to uh, surrender kind of thing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if you have the same feeling about it. Um, yep. But like, I don't know, you kind of get used to that, like, just long ass period of nothing happening. So um, that's kind of the, you know, the feeling that I had. Uh, but overall, you know, nothing, nothing really changes. The, 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 the best thing about kind of ourselves, uh, is that I have a lot of, uh, friends now, <laughs> kind of, yep. um, through the, through the success of CyberFi, we've, uh, we've been, um, we've been, um, lucky enough to surround ourselves with uh, many kind of great uh, <laughs> projects and great people. Um, and right now, right now, really, uh, it all comes down to that, right? With, uh, yeah. I think that's the most kind of important asset, right? Uh, yeah. I don't, I, we don't really, like, I'm, I'm going to be truthful. We don't have, like, a very large treasury. Um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't sell a lot of like CFI during the bull run. Um, sure. I, I, I didn't want to create any kind of, uh, uh, sell pressure. So the token, you know, went as it did. Um, may, maybe it would have been smarter to, you know, sell a bunch of CFI and sit like on a fat, um, a pillow of money. Uh, <laughs> but you know, we, we are where we are. And, um, uh, my goal is just to, create a product that will have actual usage. And I think we're, you know, we're a couple of months away from that. Um, of like, of like a polished out, you know, a uh, large amount of users ready platform. And um, we'll get there, you know, and, and I'm mostly excited about that, right? Uh, it, it's, it's pretty obvious that the launch pads all take a hit during the bear market. Because they're you know it's not yep. really uh, it's not super sexy to invest and uh, yep. et cetera et cetera, which you know um, which I understand as well. Like when we were building the launch pad, the idea was to you know gather users for yep. for future implementation for the uh, the main product of the platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then That's on the side note, like the the this the I think what, what's going to stay is the stake pad. The stake pads are going to yep. stay anyway. Yep. And they're yep. gonna they're gonna survive, and um, for me, I think as long as we uh, polish out the trading piece of the platform, I think we're gonna be in a good yep. position from there on. Because okay. like even on the trading side, we have a number of um, we have a number of uh, things that things that many um, uh, many projects don't have. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, like, oh, basically nobody has them. Um, and, um, the, 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 the kind of the situation there is that, uh, we, we will have the ability to put down like stop loss, buy stops and, uh, orders on both sides of the spectrum for, uh, for got it. But, and, and just to confirm these stop loss type activities will be on the the constant product AMMs like the sushi swap uh, Uniswap V2s and others, but not yet on the uh, range order AMMs such as uh, Uniswap V3 or the upgraded crypto pools from from Curve, right? 
Yeah, it's going to be on uh, Uniswap first, and then we're going to update, yep. upgrade it to to you know to sustain uh, the other the other ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and if you were to say you know in your mind the biggest technological hurdle for stop loss implementation today on some of these AMMs, what would be the number one sort of technical blocker, or what makes this hard? I would I would say like theoretically like you know, um the theory piece of it is that for proper stop loss you need um revert like reverse front running um yep which basically is uh front running a large sell order um yeah. and that's something we're working on at the moment as well um yeah. to create but mm, that's kind of that's something you like in in theory you would need um and uh we're trying to establish that as well um with uh with cyberfy uh but okay. more i mean like more or less um the most difficult thing right now is that we're building a pretty um we're we're not building like your usual DeFi product that is very uh, UX UI uh, not heavy, um, mm -hmm. but rather a platform that has you know a lot of buttons to click and a lot of things to okay. do, which which I, creates I, uh, which creates obviously uh, many 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 kind of development problems of uh, do, doing everything correctly. So um, we're working in that uh, in that range mm -hmm. to establish everything nicely. It's going to take mm -hmm. some time, but I'm I'm cool with that. I think in, in the in the end, as long as we create a product that people would use, and yep. um, we'll be we'll be fine, and then we'll have the opportunity to um, to add other other things to them that we're sure yep. they will find interesting. And yep. uh, yeah, we'll be. Uh, I think we'll be good to to kind of to answer the initial question. You know. Understood. Understood. Well, first of all, congrats to you and the CyberFi team. Uh, congrats to your community. of nearly 10,000 members, um, and it's super active. Uh, congrats on the volume, and of course, uh, you know the 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 numerous products that you guys have launched. And again, you know, keeping them working and functioning uh, to add value. Uh, so I think we're just up, Nelly. I think it's about time for us, Gerald. Um, what we'll do is love to keep in touch, see how things are coming along as you guys move to V2. And hopefully we'll have you back as uh, you guys continue on to implement a lot of these trading features for liquidity providers on DeFi. Definitely. Sounds great. Awesome. Rock and roll. Have a great week. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Okay. Talk soon. Thank you. And thanks, bye -bye. everyone, for listening. Bye-bye from Sommelier.finance.